Today, we hear from John and his account of the very first sign of who Jesus is as he converts water into wine. Hear the word of God. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not come yet. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now, standing there were six stone jars of water for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, fill the jars with water, and they filled them to the brim. He said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. And so they did. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk, but you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. I have some thoughts about making wine from water, that transformation event. As I mentioned to someone recently, even though I don't enjoy watching all of the news, I need to do that as a practicing theologian. Knowing what's going on within those who are inside the church and what is happening outside the church in the world is critical for the church to stay relevant, just as it was for Jesus' mission and ministry, for Jesus to get around in the community. As such, he was invited to events such as a wedding. We heard that Jesus, what Jesus said to his mother When she reported to him there was a problem at the wedding feast, Woman, what concern is that to you or me? My time has not yet come. I'm not a winemaker. I have other really important issues to deal with. Running out of wine at a party does not seem like a critical issue, nor one of social justice Jesus was so attracted to throughout his life. Nevertheless, he reflected and chose to help in this awkward situation where the host had run out of wine at the wedding. It wasn't supposed to happen then or now. After reflection, he stepped up and did what he could. This first sign from John about Jesus turning water into wine is really about transformation. Those who own vineyards might say two things about this sign. They might say just the right amount of rainfall on their grapevines every year does produce grapes that are used to make wine. This is, in a sense, a miraculous transformation. Who cares about making wine, however, from water, except those of us who drink wine or vintners who produce wine for a living? But that's not the point of this this gospel. Jesus seemed perturbed with his mother's request to use his gifts and talents to fix a problem at the wedding party when the wine ran out. It wasn't much different when I was called back to service in the church only two weeks after I had retired two and a half years ago. I thought, really? Now, can't you find someone else to help you? Jesus' response and mine were parallel. God, can't I just rest for a while? That's not really my business now. 
<laughs> no was the answer from God's spirit. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few, you might say. And it's just the same today. When members of the church are called to serve after a lifetime of service, no, I can't. I'm, I'm tired. I've done that for 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Please find someone else. Transformation often occurs when we find a new way to do an old job. A job that has become deadly boring. In John's Gospel, the sign of water changing to wine helps us realize the mundane emptiness of life when it seems that the party is all but over. That reality is not necessarily true. It was said by a church member that boredom set in after doing the same thing year after year after year in a prescribed way. Life had become like water, plain, dull, uninteresting, and yet necessary. It was only after receiving permission to find a new way to do a new ministry that excitement, vitality, and joy bubbled up and returned to that member. That is transformation of water to wine, and age knows no limitations to exploring new and exciting ministries fueled by this water to wine transformation process. Jesus transformed the water into wine, that's true, and before he did that, he transformed his attitude from why is this important to me into a taking action and finding a way to make something new and good happen for those at that wedding feast. This sign Christ gives us in changing our attitude so that we can joyfully address a problem after realizing that God has given us the resources that we need is important today. There's an old phrase that if it's going to be, it's up to me. That attitude stems from the mistaken belief that everything is up to me and that leaves no space for God's spirit to work within us, to renew in us that spark of new life, new wine in our lives. If it's going to be, it's up to me. Yes, it, it is up to me and each of us when we get up every day and we look at the gifts we've been given, planning how to use our time and talent that day can be as exciting as a child jumping out of bed on Christmas morning. You remember that, don't you? The mission study team has just begun their work here. Their mission is to learn by listening through research surveys of you as a congregation, Bible studies, and the perspective of John Calvin from those outside of this congregation in the community as well. They see you better sometimes than you see yourself. All of this to determine what God has in mind for the future. How will you turn water into wine? How are we transformed into new ministries for this time and place? They can only occur when we listen. We think we have only water to offer. We forget the feast, the sacrament Christ provides. Bread and wine, enough for the world. This whole transition process from when I arrived to when I will leave is about our living into God's plan. God has already determined where we need to go. We just need to catch up. Through the surveys, through Bible studies, we'll do together discussing the history here and the dreams that you might have for the future. Dreams which have been given to you by God. Your new wine will be the exciting ministries of the future. 
Every time we listen to the spirit within, we are making ourselves open and available to spiritual transformation, just as Jesus was transformed by God's spirit and his attitude about the wine running out at the wedding feast became the direction he chose to take for a sign to occur. He transformed from, why should I care about wine, to, I can and will help make this happen. So he creatively directed that water set aside for purification be transformed into wine to be used for a great celebration of life as the town came to together for a wedding feast. What happens when we align ourselves with God's spirit? Our attitude is transformed from, I can't, so I won't do something, to I can and I will. That is to experience the joys of new life. Those are our personal water to wine stories.